Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julian Hodgson. I used to be a chess player a few years ago, but um, now I do a little bit of teaching. And I was lucky enough to have taught Michael chess. He was um, a very talented chess player, and I think he was talented pretty much everything he did. He really enjoyed the game, and um, he was a really good sportsman, played the game in the right way. And I could see from the way the other children at the school in his class really admired and respected. There was a real sense of warmth amongst them, and uh, I could see for them, Michael, to them, to them, was a bit of a hero as well, because he just set it such a great example. It's great that you're all here, and I think actually the great thing about chess is it does what I perceive as probably the two most important, two of the most important things in life are making friends. Chess is a very welcoming community, and getting you to think using your brain. And I think at the end of the day, those are probably two of the most important things in life. And as an example, in my last round, I first started playing chess in Hammersmith Chess Club. And in my first round, in my third round I just played, when I was eight years old, there was someone I used to play at Hammersmith Chess Club 44 years ago. And here we are playing again. So it's a great way, it's a great game, you meet so many friends. Someone just asked me, is what I'm going to show you going to help your chess improve? The answer, I'm afraid, is no. It's not going to really make much difference. But the reason I'm showing you this, it shows the beauty of the game. I think deep down, the reason I've played chess and love chess is you see things in chess and you just think that's amazing. I was shown this over 30 years ago um, in Holland by a friend of mine. And it's, a, it's a puzzle, it's an endgame study by one of the greatest players of all time, an Estonian player called Paul Keres. And when I saw this, I just went wow, and I just thought chess is just such a beautiful game. So this is a position, and White actually wins this position. And if you look at the position, it doesn't look very promising for white, because black has an extra two knights and three pawns, I think. So normally, if you're two knights and three pawns up, that's a very good thing. It normally means you're going to win the game. But this is one of those rare exceptions. So what I'm going to do is I'll start, I'm just going to start by showing you the moves. And the, it was white to move, and white moved his pawn to the end of the board, this one here, and turned it magically into a queen. So suddenly things are looking quite good for, for white, he's got his queen back. Can anyone tell me what black's cunning plan was here? Yes, you, can you see the move? What about you? Go on then. Knight F7 check. Yes, what a move. Knight F7 check. Knight F7. And what's that called when you tack two pieces like that? Can you remember the name? Yes, fork. it's called a fork. So the problem is we've just got our queen, but this knight coming here has put our key in check. One of the rules of chess is if you're in check, you have to get out of check. You can't do anything else. So we're going to have to move our king. And white played his king here. And now what do you think black does? Takes the queen. Takes the queen. And at the same time, it's check. And now white played his king to... Where do you think white played his king to? Well, we're going to, yes, well, so you could get the knight back, but you're still going to lose. They're probably going to bring a pawn up and make a queen. We would get a piece back, but we're, we're so much down, we're probably going to lose anyway. What, where do you think the king should go? Yes. And now we have a very interesting position. 
Black has an extra two knights, and now Black has two knights and four pawns up. So all things being equal, this should be a winning position for Black. But Black has one slight problem. Can anyone tell me what Black's problem is? Yes. What's the problem? Yes. Exactly. The problem Black's got is the king. His king would rather be on any other square. His king is in a bit of a mating net. So can anybody tell me what would you do? I know it's black to move, but if it was white to move, what would you play? Go on, you've got a Chelsea top now, so I'll have to ask you. Yes. So the threat, the threat is basically bishop d1, and that's actually checkmate. Not quite, because they can block with a pawn, but then we'll take it, and it's checkmate. So we are threatening checkmate in one move. Is there anything black can do? Who said e2? That's the move. Yes. Gosh, you're good over there. E2 is the only way to stop, and then instantly someone said exactly the right move. Bishop E4, threatening, checkmate in one move. Are you allowed to do that? I thought you had to make a queen. Oh, you can make a knight as well? Gosh, I never knew that. So you can go e1 equals knight. Look, I just happened to have a couple of extra two knights. So there's a bit of a clue there. Ah. So we make a knight. And now if the bishop goes there, we can take it. Now we get to the key move of the game. This is called a waiting move. White makes a very clever move here. And this was the move that really amazed me. One bishop dominates the whole of the black army. Go on. Do you want to have a... Yes? Do you want to have a try? King to G4. I'm sorry. King to F4. King to F4 is possible, but you're not really doing... You need your king here because it's the piece that's trapping the, the black king. Well, OK, I'll ask an Arsenal supporter. Go on, then. Bishop d3, the knight can take. Someone over here, go on, yes. Thank you. And that is called, that's a brilliant move, that is called, it's called a quiet move or a waiting move. It's not actually threatening anything immediately, but it's a fantastic move. Can anybody see what the long-term threat, why we've gone, where's that bishop going to head to? Uh, do you want to have a go, Yashan? Have you got... Yeah? Wait. No? Yes? It's F7. No, because the knight's controlling F7. Go on, yes? Yes? Because the king can go there. And you, actually, that's a very good point. Normally, when you see a good player make a mistake, especially at my level, normally it's because they have an optical illusion. And that's the most common thing. They move their pawn up and they forget they're no longer controlling a square. That's the most common mistake top players make because it, it affects us in an optical illusion way. So can anyone see the move? Yes, over there, you with the red top, the purple top. You, 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 yes. Perfect. In this position, white is threatening to go bishop c4, followed by bishop e2 checkmate. Can anyone see a way to try and stop, control that? Um, go on then, yes. Knight g2 check. No, knight g2. If you move the knight, we'll checkmate you there. Yes, can you see a move? Knight, the knight can't go to e3. That's e3, doesn't, can't. If you go knight d3, I checkmate you. 
with my bishop. <laughs> Go on then, you, yes. We do the H6 pawn forward. That way? It's going that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that, if you could, that would have been a very good move. That's called thinking outside the box. I like that. What do you want to do? Yes. C2. C2, well done, Alexander. That's the only move. And the idea of C2 is when they go bishop here, threatening check. Oh, I just happen to have another knight. Because normally when you buy a chess set like this, you don't get four knights. You only get two, but I thought ahead. You see, I, I used them from another chess set I had. C1 equals knight. Stopping the only move. So twice we've made a pawn reach the end of the board, and twice we've had to turn it into a knight, not a queen. So we're almost at the end of this now. Can anyone now see what white does here? The final couple of moves. Yes, you at the back there, standing up, yes. Bishop F1, no, that's not the move I'm looking for. You, yes, you. Bishop B5, yes. Threatening to go, Bishop E8. Is there a way black can stop Bishop E8? Checkmate, yes. Knight C7, we're almost there. One good more move, one more good move. Let's have an adult, any adults who wants to have a go? Go on, yes, go on. F1. No. Yes, go on. Bishop A4, well done sir, Bishop A4. And now there's nothing black can do. The next move, you can make any move, whatever you do, move a pawn up. Our next move is going to be bishop d1 check. Almost, mate, they can block with a knight. Bishop takes knight, they can block with a knight. And then bishop takes f3 check. Isn't that an amazing problem? And that shows the, the absolute beauty of chess. So there we go. That's been finished perfectly on time. And good luck to everyone in the fourth round.